So we've been getting a lot of questions about running hybrid chapter meetings. Some chapters have been running hybrid meetings, and I have been working on planning to run the hybrid conference in 2022 when we have it in Jacksonville. So I prepared a couple of images, and um, I have this back camera here so you can kind of see my lunch and learn style setup uh, to demonstrate what kind of equipment you could get up to. Uh, and you know how the lunch and learns turn out, so you can kind of see what I have going on here. So let's get you oriented with what you see me using right now, because I'll be talking about stuff like that in, in, this, in this example. So I am currently wearing a lav mic uh, with a little, a little fuzzy on it. Um, it came with it. Uh, this is a pretty cheap one. And I have that connected to a Tascam recorder, which can send the US can send the, the sound via USB to my computer. So I'm going to switch to the, the back camera. So you can see what it looks like. Tascam, headphones, microphone here. Okay. Now you can see the webcam right there, and then the ring light, which we'll also be discussing. And I have three screens, I have many screens. Uh, it is very useful uh, when, we, when we start to talk about the sort of above and beyond uh, way you can go about hybrid meetings. So let's get started. Here is a graphic of a very basic chapter setup with the addition of, I would say, almost the minimum that you need for streaming. So if you have a standard presenter, right, you have a person with a PowerPoint. So you have a, something to display the PowerPoint. Uh, some chapters, I guess, have a big monitor, but I think most chapters have um, a projector. So I have that marked up there. And then the presenter and their computer is there on the right. And in order to get that presenter to the internet, <laughs> which is the internet is where it is displaying your displaying your hybrid meeting, whether it's a Zoom meeting, whether it's a StreamYard sending to YouTube or a StreamYard sending to a Facebook group or a Facebook page, you know, somehow that person and their presentation has to get to the internet. So they have a computer and they have some way to capture their audio and video. So probably the easiest way to do this is a webcam. Now I have some webcams here. The webcam that I am using, switch back to the GH5S. So GH5S is the name of the camera uh, that I have in the back there. So this webcam here in the center is this Logitech webcam here, but it's probably about oh, 10 years old nine years old. I've had this webcam for a long time and I think it was 75 bucks when I when I bought it. So it's not it's not that much money and then you know a nice tripod is going to be 50 bucks maybe 40 bucks and the tripod does not need to be complicated. It the most webcams in this webcam comes with a little a little screw on the bottom. Actually let me show you that. So currently I have this mounted here but you know, the point is you can mount this on pretty much your standard tripod. So you see there's this little screw here and then I can turn this light off and you can see better. Ah, there it is shining. So you can see the screw base and that is very standard for a webcam. And you know, this is usually pretty easy. Most of them come with this dial feature. If you have a camera that you use for you know, taking native plant photos, you're probably pretty used to the way that works. And you might already have a tripod that would work for this situation. Just the main takeaway is you don't want to be just mounting or setting that tripod on a table um, or on the, on the computer that the presenter is using unless it's absolutely the perfect height and the perfect angle because you might be looking up at them you know, they're gesturing wildly like this, um, or, you know, they move out of range, or it's just not the right location. So really, it's very important that you have put the camera in the right place. And for the microphone, you need to be very close to the person. So if you're using your standard webcam, you need to be very close to, to the presenter. You might have people chatting 
in your audience, in your live audience, and that is going to really ruin your audio quality. You might have a large air handler, train noise, car noise, and you really want that, that webcam, that microphone on that webcam very, very close, as close as you can get it to the person while keeping them kind of in frame. So why am I so concerned about the audio? Is because it doesn't matter quite so much what the person looks like. Like if I turned off my video right now and you couldn't see me, as long as you could see my graphic, you could still get the presentation. As long as you heard my narration with the, with the mic here and the graphic, that would be good enough. And that's not ideal. It's not a TED talk. You know, it's not the world's best YouTube video, but it's good enough to communicate the information. But if you have a really distracting background noise, you can barely hear the person fill in the blank. You can't hear the person at all. Then the presentation is ruined for the people who are online. And I can't really emphasize enough how much you need a tech person. So you might not need a person with a laptop. You might be able to run, say, a StreamYard or a Zoom from a phone with a really good connection. So what would happen is the person on the tech support person, the tech person, would be managing the meeting. If it's a Zoom meeting, which I have a, a slide for Zoom meetings. If it's Zoom meeting, they're managing the meeting. Or if it's a StreamYard, they are managing the broadcast. Uh, and this is important because the person who's presenting cannot be doing any moderation or fixing any technical issues. They are busy. They're presenting. They, they can't be hopping back and forth onto the Zoom window and then back to their presentation. And if you're trying to run this thing where off of one computer, you have a person who's trying to change the slides, but you're clicking away to the Zoom window, they, you know, if they click the little forward button on a little clicker, you know, it'll be forward clicking on the Zoom. It'll be like left clicking on the Zoom uh, meeting rather than advancing their slides. So you could run it off of one computer if you had, <laughs> you know, if you had your tech person running the PowerPoint and managing the Zoom and making sure that when, when the presenter is ready to change slides, that they are back on the PowerPoint window. And I, I, in my opinion, that is a little tough to manage. And that would not work with StreamYard. That may work with Zoom, but that would not work with StreamYard um, unless you had a very specific type of setup. And I would be happy to talk to any chapter about how they would like to set it up, how they've been running their current meetings, and how this would work. Uh, so this is sort of a one-size-fits-all, but there are so many ways to make this work that just because I'm showing this on the graphic doesn't mean this is exactly how you do it, but this is a way that would likely work. So I do recommend two computers for this. I just think that is going to be much easier. And if you have your tech person who's responsible type, who's maybe already bringing something to the meeting, you know, maybe brings the um, uh, projector already, you know, that person who knows how to use StreamYard and has all these little cables and knows how to put them all together and knows where the plugs are in the meeting room and knows how close to set up the camera. I really think having this person is going to be pretty, pretty critical. So your presenter computer, neither of these computers have to be really nice, especially if you're using just StreamYard or Zoom and you're not using the go big or go home option, which I'll, options, which I'll talk about later. So the presenter computer must be compatible with the projector, connected to the internet, does not have two loud fans when it's running at full bore. It has a USB port that's open for the webcam. If you have like a really old computer or a really like lightweight computer that only has like one USB port and you're using that USB port for the clicker, well, you know, you're going to be out of luck. If you're using StreamYard, you need the Chrome browser. If you're using Zoom, it needs to have the Zoom app. Uh, it needs to have PowerPoint. Or, I mean, if you're open source type person, then you could do uh, LibreOffice and LibreOffice does open some PowerPoint presentations. But if your chapter is already running meetings, you already know how all this works. Um, and I do recommend a little remote clicker. So StreamYard sends to wherever, sometimes all at the same time, simultaneously if you want. A couple of friends have been doing simulcasts for quite a while. Um, so think a little less interactive on your audience members side. But I've been to meetings about meetings, <laughs> meetings about 
how to do hybrid meetings. And I've been to meetings with hybrid components. It's really hard to get the in-person people to interact with the online people and the online people to interact with in-person people. I mean, there's no interaction. You basically need to have a moderator who's relaying any comments. Now, if you have someone who's, who is a very good tech person and really wants to in, maybe you're running a Zoom, who really wants to get the people online involved, you could have speakers on your tech support computer. And if that person, if that tech support person is say wearing headphones like I'm wearing, and then switches over to speakers during the Q and A, and maybe keeps the volume down until someone is, you bring someone in, say unmute yourself, and they have a question, and then everybody can hear that question because they switch from headphones to speakers. That's a possibility. Uh, if you want to manage that, but think about the more things you have to go from virtual to in person, in person to virtual. That someone has to remember to mute everyone's microphones, you know, make sure there's no echoes because you're in a meeting. If you're, say, this person is presenting to StreamYard, right? Your presenter is presenting to StreamYard. If the microphone for the tech person's computer is on, you'll be getting an echo because the tech person's microphone will be picking up what the presenter is saying. So there's, the more you make this complicated, the more moving parts you have. So I recommend that you start really simple with as few microphones and as few cameras as possible in a separation between the presenter and the tech person. Okay, so we've already kind of discussed a Zoom meeting. Um, I put these big, you know, no sound <laughs> on these things because, you know, I've had lots of bad experiences in Zoom meetings with people, you know, using the bathroom while the Zoom meeting was still on, and I don't really trust Zoom audiences, but if you've been running chapter meetings, you know, virtually with Zoom audiences, and, you know, you have a good, a good group of people who attend your meetings, you know, you may not have to worry about this so much, but still, I really recommend making sure you only have one thing taking in the audio from the room, and nothing sending audio out from your virtual component into the live stream. So you don't have someone talking to their partner about whether they got chocolate chip cookies at the grocery store and they forgot to unmute themselves, you know, right in the middle of a really good part of your presentation. So in this particular Zoom thing, you don't really need any other equipment versus StreamYard. Um, and it may be more interactive. It's really your chapter's preference. And again, please contact me with how you're doing things and what equipment you already have. And I would be happy to walk you through, help you decide what you need to buy or what you can just use of things you already have. Okay, so I just, the tech person, I, I imagine, before we move on, that the tech person, they have a list of to-dos here during this meeting. They need to get that invite link, the Zoom meeting invite, right? They need to get it to the presenter. The presenter needs to join the meeting and you know the presenter needs to be able to share their slides and then they need to be able to set everything up troubleshoot any issues people will be in the chat hey i can't hear um can you turn them up oh i can't see the presentation fill in the blank there may be problems you know the usb could come unplugged for the webcam they need to know how to handle that they need to start and end the broadcast uh, that's not such a big deal in zoom meetings that's really more for Streamyard, and then but they need to start the meeting and end the meeting. And you could do cool things. The doing cool things during the broadcast is more for StreamYard. Uh, StreamYard, you can show uh, people's comments in the, you know, on top of the video is like a scroll bar. You can have a, a bottom bar. You can put subtitles, ask for donations, blah, blah, blah. But totally optional, of course. And, and the tech person needs to, they're the ones seeing the questions, right? So they need to handle the online questions. And if there are any questions that people in the audience have, the speaker's not going to pick that up. I mean, the microphone that is faced to the speaker, like the, the webcam that's, that's facing the speaker, it's too close to the speaker. The point is to get the audio from the presenter. So if someone asks a question in the audience, it's going to be like when you're at a conference and the speaker has to repeat the question. So the tech person is probably going to have to coach the presenter to repeat the question 
if you're using a very basic setup. So let's just go back to that basic setup. Webcam, tech person, two computers, tripod, projector. Ah, here, we have the supply list. Um, I would probably add, you know, a set of studio headphones. This is a Sennheiser MKE, and I have had these for about 10 years. And if you guys have been paying attention to Lunch and Learns, um, oh no, MKE is my microphone. Sennheiser headphones. There we go. Okay, so these are the, the headphones I have. They're about 10 years old, and I just replaced the ear cups because if you have been paying attention to Lunch and Learns, they kind of got tore up recently because I've been using them so much. Um, and the ear cups were $6 from eBay. So, you know, <laughs> really economical. Uh, you know, they're wired in just a 3.5 millimeter plug. Okay, things not to buy. Do not buy a Bluetooth or a wired headset for the presenter. If you've been in meetings with people with these Bluetooth wireless headsets, they're very tinny. They have like this noise canceling involved and they just do not sound very good. And if your point is to make a good quality meeting, you know, you're bothering to do all this stuff. You're bothering to set all this stuff. You might as well do your best to make it sound okay. And usually these things are kind of expensive um, anyway, so I don't recommend it. Okay. Don't buy a very expensive video camera. So, you know, you can blow lots of money on video cameras. That camera was really expensive. Um, the lens was expensive. Um, just don't do it. Now, you may be able to use an existing camera you have. Many DSLRs, but not all, have this capability to send the signal out of the camera into a computer, but only if you have certain supplies which we will talk about in the go big or go home section. And don't bother with very expensive computers, especially when you're just starting. This is the incremental thing. You want to try it and succeed, and then every meeting maybe pick a thing to improve. Like, do a little after action review. What could have gone better in this meeting? Oh, the audio was too low. Oh, the tripod's too short. Oh, you know, the tech person didn't see this question in the chat that was really good. So pick a thing to improve and um, as, I, as I'll show you in the Go Big or Go Home, which displays some of the things you can do to improve the meetings once you've started to try them, uh, then, you know, then go for it. And don't bother to try hybrid meetings if you don't have internet access at your meeting location. Now, you may be able to get by with a hotspot. I have done a live stream with the FNPS hotspot that we have. Not one of the Lunch and Learns, uh, but... Um, a live stream for um, Suncoast Sierra, and it actually worked okay. So if you're running StreamYard off your phone, or you're doing a Zoom off your phone, it could work. I don't recommend it, but it could work. Um, don't do it if you have loud background, no background noise at your meeting location, like a constant dull roar. Or if you have really, really, really chatty people that never shut up in the back of the meeting, uh, you know, this is just not going to work because people aren't going to be able to hear the speaker. Now, you can mitigate that with a lav mic, uh, which will pretty much just pick up only the speaker. So if it's people talking in the back of the room, you maybe could mitigate that. Or three, if you don't have anyone to be the tech person and manage this stuff. Like, I've learned how to manage this stuff. When I went to film Craig Hugel, I packed up this monitor here. I packed up this monitor here and I packed up the, you know, my camera and this, this little thing that handles the HDMI input into the computer. I packed up all my microphones. I had backup microphones. You know, I know what to pack now with trial and error and by making mistakes and by putting a lot of time and effort and money into it, but you know, you need to have that person who is willing to do that. And they can start small. Like I said, you can just start with a webcam, give it a trial run, maybe don't advertise it all over Facebook for your first time you're trying it. Um, yeah, but you need that one person who's gonna 
know the logistics. They know the meeting place. They know where the power cords are. You know, they know how to work it if something breaks, that kind of thing. Okay, so you like this. You love the lunch and learns and the after hours. You want your stuff to look really good and sound really good. And you want your online audience to have a good experience. First thing you do is make the audio better. Get a lav mic rather than with webcam audio. So that's an extra step to, step to set up too. So say you have a lav mic, which they have USB lav mics. So mine currently plugs into a recorder. Well, you don't need this middleman. You can buy a little microphone that just sits on the person, sits on the presenter, right? So you have to walk up to them and say, hey, put this through your shirt, thank you. And then you plug that into their presenter computer. And then you have to go into the Zoom window and select the microphone. Select that as the microphone, right? So one more step. Can you handle that? Let me show you these lav mics here. So here are some lav mics. See, USB lav lapel microphone, 18 bucks. So it'll kind of tether your person, your presenter, to the computer, which could be a good thing <laughs> if you have a webcam with not very wide depth of field, um, depending on how long that little cable is. Now, of course, you could get a USB extension cord, of which I have several, and I would be happy to send you my extra. Anybody who's interested, I have, I have two 10-foot USB extension cords that I thought I would need, but I never have, so you can just email me, communications at and I'd be happy to send that to you. Okay, so you've improved your audio. What are you doing next? Well, if you are successfully sharing the presenter's screen, their presentation to the world, that would be, if you're not doing that, say you're taking a video of their pr presentation, so you're getting a video of the PowerPoint, that would be the next thing to improve. But I don't recommend you take a video of their PowerPoint. I recommend you share their screen to the internet, just like I do in the Lunch and Learns, and just like I recommended in the first drawing slide that I showed. Okay, the next thing you can do is make your video better. And that is the first thing you do is not buy a new webcam, okay? Any webcam looks terrible in low light. So my, what, $70, $80 webcam? Yeah, I look like a 90s video vlogger. I just, <laughs> you know, it's just the light from the LEDs. I don't look as good. Um, we switch back to the GH5S. It's so dark in here, you know, this is a really nice low light camera and it just doesn't look that great. So I would say, let me see how blurry I am. That is the best thing that you can do. Now I have, this ring light is pretty expensive. It was like 140 bucks or something, but it gets brighter. Oh, it gets dimmer and it gets brighter and it gets yellow and it gets blue. Now you don't need all these features, but, um, I was using this as my main supplemental lighting for filming all sorts of things. So you don't need that. They make, they make ring lights that are like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. You know, I'd say, I feel like 50 bucks is probably a pretty sweet spot if you're looking for, if you're looking for a ring light. They make LED panel lights. They make little tiny box LEDs that don't need, that you just charge them ahead of time, like a cell phone and you turn them on and sort of put them where you want. There's floor lights. You could become like, you know, somebody who puts on a conference with like floor lights. Um, but keep in mind that you really do not want halogen lights. They're really hot. Your speaker's probably pretty nervous. They may or may not be a professional speaker. Uh, it's going to be pretty light. Usually these come with big boxes, you know, so they might um, distract from your in-person experience. And, you know, lighting is a little bit tougher in tight spaces. And that's why ring lights are so good because they're really compact and flat and they don't really block people's view. Um, the next upgrade would be a nice camera, but as I showed with this, um, this is called the video capture card that I have. So it's going back to the GH5S. This thing is taking the HDMI signal that's being sent from a camera and it's taking that HDMI signal and then it's turning it into USB. And then my computer is you know, taking this signal. Um, and these things are, yeah, you can get them for much cheaper now, but when the pandemic first hit, they were really expensive. Yeah, I got this one, this Elgato Camlink. That's what I have. And it's pretty reliable. 
but it's not just like a webcam. Like, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you have to restart the computer. Sometimes you have to activate and deactivate to get it to work. Sometimes Zoom doesn't pick it up. So you're just adding complication and skills that your tech person needs to have. But if you have a motivated tech person, this could be really fun and interesting. Okay. And, you know, keep in mind that you will also need external power for your camera. Most cameras will not run for an hour and a half with, you know, just on battery power. So I have a cord. I have this cord here and it has a little dummy battery and it connects into the camera and then a little power converter and then it plugs into, I have power strips under, under this desk here. And the next thing you can do to improve the experience is to have a better Q&A. You can have an audience camera and a mic. So have people walk up to like another webcam set up for people to have a Q&A with your, like to, to go into the Q&A and so that the people in the online audience can hear the people and see the people who are asking the questions. And then I would say the last thing I recommend doing is improving the live stream quality. So StreamYard only goes up to 1080p. So if you're thinking of a monitor, that's a pretty common monitor size, like a computer monitor. That is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. It's commonly referred to as HD video. So when I wanted to improve the lunch and learns, I moved to a 1440 pixel screen because the way I do the lunch and learns, I stream whatever is on my largest screen. So if you look at my, this thing, this, this monitor here, this is my largest screen. Okay. It's not the largest screen, <laughs> right? So it's the most, it's the highest resolution screen. This is the 1080 monitor at 32 inches. And this is a 1440 monitor at 28 inches. So it does a better job and sends higher resolution imagery to the, to the lunch and learns and the after hours. And in order to be able to do that, you have to be using a different software than StreamYard because StreamYard is not going to be able to, to do that well. So you'll need that additional monitor and that additional monitor will have to come with you to the presentation, to the, you know, to your chapter meeting. And then you will also need to learn how to use this software that I use for the lunch and learns if you would like your uh, presentations to look like mine. So that's why I put it as the last thing because it's a bit challenging. All right, so the last thing we're gonna look at is a diagram of what go big or go home would look like. And I actually forgot that second monitor on this diagram, so shame on me. There's no headphones on the person, on the tech person. So, you know, uh, who am I? Anyways, so you can see there's supplemental lighting. There is a video capture card there connected to the HDMI cable, which is connected to the camera on the tripod. The distance from the presenter depends on your camera and the lens that's on it. And the presenter is using a lav mic that's connected to the computer. Or, you know, you could have that lav mic connected to the camera um, and, you know, that sound will be sent through the HDMI cable to, you know, to either the Zoom meeting or the StreamYard. And then you have your tech person with the audience cam for Q&A with that extra monitor. All right. So that's everything. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Again, I am very happy to assist with setting this up or advice or more details about my setup or anything. I'm here to help. Thank you.